regarding licensing, I think the, uh, the hotels are licensed by means of need to borrow leave. I pray the the hotel owners of Aiv should be able to borrow leave. But at first, uh, uh, the hotel owners they are here. They thought said the division is, is going to is going to milk them. We say no, we are not going to overstack you, but rather we are going to what we are going to do. We are going to encourage you to transform this town more in a way of putting more structures. What are the roles that we are going to play where you are going to benefit? We are going to approve your, 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 your building plans expeditiously. We are going to even approve them with the subsidized prices. You, know, you see those kind of things. Then we are going to ensure that the land transactions that you are going to uh, are impact in, we are going to ensure that uh, you don't lose your money because we are going to guide you at free cost to ensure that uh, you don't purchase air. So we, in, we, we have a lot at stake. And because of this, that's why they are performing very well. And uh, we are happy with that, and we are going to continue with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. the mayor, the deputy resident city commissioner, the assistant resident city commissioners, the town clerk, the central division, the police fraternity, immigration officers, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I wish to thank all of you for turning up for this meeting. It was called over the, uh, over the weekends. We gave out letters yesterday, and uh, we appreciate your coming for this meeting. Uh, two, <coughs> we have two WhatsApp groups where we normally communicate. We have one WhatsApp group for hotel owners only, and then we have another WhatsApp group for security, our city council, central division, hotel managers, and hotel owners. Uh, Chair, you will know that there are many hotel owners who are not within the city. So in most cases, they don't attend meetings. So we created a separate platform for the managers to be able to represent the owners. But every information is shared on both platforms. The hotel owners who are not here are being updated on what is happening. I really appreciate your coming. As the town clerk said, we have uh, very many hotels in our city. You are welcome, you are right. There are new hotels. There are new hotels which are coming up. They also come and sit in There are new hotels which are coming up. I think uh, recently we had two new hotels. Uh, that means the number of rooms has increased. Uh, we have had a very good working relationship with the our city council. As the town clerk mentioned earlier, we had our fracas and misunderstandings because we are just coming out of the two-year lockdown during COVID. So, uh, after COVID was lifted, it took time for the hotels to catch up with business. So returns were so poor, our taxes were poor, our returns to URA, our returns to city council were so poor, and that prompted the city council to take enforcement measures. We really appreciate the town clerk, Mr. Malik, for coming up with measures where taxpayers sit together with the, I'm sorry to use the word tax collector, mm -hmm. the enforcement agency city council. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate uh, Mr. Malik, the town clerk. We sat for various meetings here and understood each other. We now pay hotel tax according to not the occupancy, but according to the number of rooms each facility has. And we have agreed on 25% of the number of rooms which is paid monthly. So every hotel now knows the outgoing, what is due every month. Like I know I pay 90,000 per month. If I get money, I want to pay three, four months in advance, it's my business. You know? It's no longer, it's no longer where city council 
people come, as you said, we maintain two registers, we hide records. Yeah, those were true things were happening. You know? We have avoided all that, and it's a streamlined, it's a very straightforward tax payment system. You come here, you get your, you know, you get your assessment through IRAS. Many of us do get on the phone. Town clerk, many people call me, I'm able to get assessment for them. And they go to pay even without stepping in the offices of Central Division, which is a very good system. Members, I want to applaud the IRAS system. It has made tax payment very, very easy. You get your, ass your assessment on phone, you go to an agent banking, you deposit, and that is it. You don't spend time and uh, money to come to Central Division. Um, as mentioned earlier, we have issues with the registration. Members, issues of registration are very, very important. As said, uh, we used to falsify some reports to avoid taxes. But uh, when you avoid uh, registration, you are creating a very big loophole for insecurity. I've gone to so many hotels, I'll be open, Mr. Tamprak, to say that I've seen they don't register people at all. There are some hotels who don't register people at all. That one, I'll not defend my fellow hoteliers. There are some hotels, you don't pull your ID, they don't give you a room, which is very good, which is supposed to be the way to go. If somebody doesn't have an ID, he's supposed to produce a driving permit, he's supposed to... Others I verify on phone. I say, give, you, give me your phone number. I try mobile money. I'm able to see the name registered on the mobile money and see if it is the same name you have given me uh, on the register. So it's very important that we, we do registration. In the years past, we have, uh, we have had incidences where security has come to arrest people in my hotel. And it is a very well coordinated issue which didn't bring this organization to the hotel. So I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Members, registration is very important. The other area where we are failing is coordination with the crime intelligence. We are supposed to be remitting our registrations from almost every morning to crime intelligence. I don't think we are doing that. And members, after this meeting, one of our resolutions will be that from tomorrow, it's a simple matter of photocopying. Photocopying is very cheap, 100 per page. You photocopy your registration form and deliver it to his office. It's important that you do that. Uh, Chair, I know when meetings are like this, the issues of taxes on America. It's true businesses have to pay multiple taxes. We pay income tax to URA. We pay things as you can. Some of us could pay for NSSF. We contribute to NSSF. We pay tax on rental income. We pay property tax. We pay for operating license for the city council. We also pay for signposts which are on the streets. It's a little bit heavy on the businesses. I know it's not, it's, it's, it's policy matter. It's, a, it's government of Uganda policy matter, but you represent the government. The office of the president is represented here. There are certain times when businesses are really, really low. Like 2023, the economy was really down. We are just coming out of it. So I will request the office of the president to really look into this. But there are also other opportunities which, because we don't come together, that we miss. Uganda Development Bank has come here, I think, for two occasions, trying to talk to people to popularize. The government of Uganda puts money in Uganda Development Bank. And this is development fund, which you can take 10, 15 years to pay. At very good interest rates. I think there's only one hotel in Arua that has benefited from this. Members, we really need to pick interest in what is going around. The president keeps talking about this. It's a lot of money in UDB. We need to take interest. 
two, the Uganda Tourism Board is going around classifying hotels. I think as early as next week they'll be in Arua. They have identified four hotels for classification. It's important that when they come, they cooperate. Lastly, I encourage us to also register with the Uganda Hotel Owners Association. That's the national one. While we have our local association in Arua, it's also important to be affiliated to the Uganda Hotel Owners Association. Thank you, Chair. We're ready to listen to the security team. Other comments will come in later on. Thank you, Thank you. Because you have not seen much complaint of late from the hotel owners. I think your leadership is commendable. Thank you so much. Office attached to Arua Regional Office. Um, today, in this meeting, I, I had wanted to focus on two major areas. One are the guests you receive, and two, the people you also employ. Okay. So, the guests you receive, you receive guests who come from, uh, some come from across the borders. Others have guests from within, and we appreciate that. Now, uh, when we talk about people who are coming from across the borders, these are foreigners in most cases. What are you meant to look out for? Number one, a passport is the first and foremost. In an instance that a person doesn't have a passport, there are other documentations that permit them to do what to be able to come into our country. Uh, we have uh, in East Africa currently we have uh, an arrangement where people move freely <coughs> without without paying visas. All for the, all, all East African countries. Although by the time you're coming in, you should have a certain type of document that does what that permits you. For example, when the, uh, the people going Kenyans and Rwandans. Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda have an arrangement where their citizens can move across borders with the use of only a national ID. But when you reach a border, when you pass through a designated border point, you are given a certain document. Uh, it's, it's not popular around here, but there is a document called an interstate pass. I did carry one with me. Uh, this this one is where we stand to show that you have done what you have exited Uganda or you have entered uh, Kenya or Rwanda. When you get back into the country, we we, re, we retain that. We take it. When you are moving, for example, to Congo, uh, Tanzania, Sudan, there, is, there are other types of documents you get. There's a temporary movement permit, there's a certificate of identity, all those. At least you have to have somewhere that a stamp is appended. So I've seen uh, Congolese around here always have there's a small pass for a few days that permits them to get in for a few days. So look out for those things. One, as I told you, if you fail, if the person doesn't have a passport, you ask for any other travel document that should be showing a valid period you get if they are your guests at least you should have seen you can ask them when did you get into the what if the country you have the discretion to to interact with them find out what have they come to do because you are the people who who get to encounter them face to face we have who now in the country we are quite few immigration officers so we don't we are not properly staffed to cover all these border points and we don't have enough designated border points i think all across the country we have about 67 or so that is all across 
all across the country serving regional offices, borders and everywhere, and even some we send, some immigration officers we send abroad, we have about 600 officers. Yeah? So that gives you a picture of how understaffed we are. Um, when uh, when the, I, I think in the, some time, some, there was an issue that was raised in the previous meeting that you, that you raised, where you had talked of some, identified some areas that required staffing. That is one of our challenges. Yes. So I think I, I've given this slide. So when you, when you look at what a person presents to you, ask them for the visa. If it is a foreigner from a visa-prone country, there are countries that pay for visas. They always have a sticker in their passport, in most cases. But if immediately, so long as a person has passed through a designated border point, they will have something to show you. You can ask them, show us your what? Your visa. You as the hotel owners. When you get that, a form of identifying a person, enter it into your register. There is a statutory instrument, uh, the Uganda Citizenship and Control uh, Statutory Instrument of 2004, uh, number 16, part 5, section 20, talks, it, it orders, it gives a, a directive to hotel managers and lodge managers to take down this information and present it to the immigration officers. It is actually required to be on a daily, according to the statutory instrument. It's required to be on a daily. So yeah, even people who post, even if it is not, uh, even if it is not in a hotel setting, and you host a foreigner mm -hmm. in your place, you have to do the due diligence and inform. Okay, I think that one is a bit clear now because the, we have, have every speaker has been echoing on the issue of us taking. Of recent, we, we, ha we had a small, a small operation. Although it wasn't in Central Division, we handled it in the outskirts. And we visited many places. There was no place that had a proper register. There was none. So I, I appreciate what Chairman here was saying. He, he, hung, he hung all of you out there. It is now your duty to make sure that you take up Go, buy a small book, buy a book, a counter book. Draw up some lines. Include what the, possibly what the person is uh, doing, or what they have told you they are going to do. If they have told you they are maybe transiting through traveling, maybe to Kampala or where, enter. If they have come to, you, you, if they have come for hospital purpose, enter. You get, have the person's name, possibly passport number, ID number, written there. Have a, their contact the reason of their visit and possibly time for checking. Okay? That is the first one. Uh, the next the next aspect I want to talk about are the people you employ. We have uh, an agreement. I will mention that it's called the East African Common Market Protocol with Kenya and Rwanda. Yes, even if you have free movement within those countries, when you are going to work there, you have to get a work permit. For Kenya, the advantage for Kenya and Rwanda, it is free. Yes, you apply online, so that we grant you the permission, we deem meet fit for you to do what? To work. But it is free, it will come at no what? Cost. But these other countries, people have to do what? To pay to work. Okay? Because some of these jobs we are looking at also trying to safeguard them for our are we getting the picture? So when you have a foreigner working, you have to try and see how to get them registered and what. Our office I I don't I know some of you may not know where the office is, it's opposite the airstrip. We are there. We're always there for any kind of immigration related guidance. We are there. Uh, the next aspect I want to talk about uh, there are also another group category of people, the refugees. 
People who claim to be refugees always channel them to go to the office of the Prime Minister. We have a branch here. Let them go and begin their registration process so that they are identified as refugees. Because everyone who comes in, if, if there is no one in here who lets people come into their home, even if it is a visa that at least someone has to come and tell you, hey, uncle, I'm, I'm also where, I'm also here. So that is what we are out to do. You get. So we call upon people. Today just came with that message of the registers. We want updated registers because at any one point we may be walking. And as uh, I don't remember which speaker had mentioned this, but when we find that this, you're lacking in this, it is now going to fall on to you. It will, we shall now hold you what accountable. I have I have my act there. Let me let me read it for you and writing for you says every hotel or lodge manager shall furnish a daily return to the immigration officer of the area of all non-citizens accommodated by him or her. And any person, whether a citizen or not, who hosts any alien shall report the presence of that person to the nearest immigration office. Any person, then the next part says, any person who contravenes the sub-regulation commits an offense. I think, for me, that's where I end. Because, okay, the, te the, you may not, the, the technical aspect, you may not get a hold of it, outright for identifying whether a person is legitimate or has maybe overstayed in the country or what it may not be your discretion but you play your due diligence on your side make sure that you identify this person so that later on if at all i come and i i cross check and i see that this person it is now out of your hands where the problem would come in for for you is when you are unable to identify this person to me are we together? Yes. So, I think with those few words, I rest my case. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very you much. much. My apologies for having been a little bit late. And, uh, I don't have so much. <coughs> well, I would have a lot, but uh, I did get most of the things discussed. I felt to speak to my, my presentation to basically taxes, and uh, the taxes I'm going to talk about, first of all, allow me to thank mm. our town clerk. From what I got from the chairperson, of the certainty of the taxes they are paying, I think that's one of the principles of taxation. People should know when to pay taxes and how much to pay. I think that was a very good move to make them understand what they're supposed to pay. And uh, two, I would like to thank our partners, because URIA and the taxpayer, these are partners now. We are partnering to work together together. As Uganda Revenue Authority, the target for this year is 31.9 trillion. And the 39.1 trillion are not going to raise it if our partners are not doing so well. That's why such engagements are very important, Chair. Because at the end of the day, when we hear the report like the, what the Chairman has given about how the challenges that are reducing, for us, URA, we shall be smiling. Because we shall know that at least our partners are trying to do a little bit well. And uh, we shall be able to meet our target. I want to urge the hotel owners and the business community on uh, one aspect of how we do our business, and that is how we should be able to meet our tax, tax obligations. We have a very good opportunity of filing returns and both the, 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 the annual returns and the provisional return. Time and again, we normally have challenges on when we do this and how we do it. And that usually comes with uh, also the, 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 the human resource we sometimes employ in our businesses. Otherwise, if you have a very good improved human resource, you know, the phase of enforcement is always dirty. Enforcement phase is always tough. But uh, when we avoid it, there's a way we can become friends. Because the opportunity is given to personal filing returns, we may just be meeting during such engagements. And uh, when you invite us for breakfast or when we invite you for breakfast, but the systems will help us. Yara has improved so much in his systems, and uh, the systems are always communicating. And uh, with you, if you do your, if you perform your obligations timely, I think it becomes very easy for us. By this, I request us that uh, we file our returns timely, because it's all about you declaring yourself. This is how much I've earned, 
And this is how much I'm going to pay. We shall receive it through the system, analyze it, and give the feedback. When the final time for final returns comes, you do the same. I think by that we shall be supporting each other. And to add you also, in case of any challenge realized, please don't hesitate to reach offices. Those offices are there because of you. When you don't pay those taxes, those offices will not survive. They will not even close. So don't sit down with their challenges. Meet your offices anytime. Reach out to us anytime so that the issues are addressed timely. Uh, one more other issue I want to talk about briefly is code is a need to understand. Is that as the hotel owners, there's a concern that is coming up about uh, the surroundings of these hotels, especially the coating stages, what about the stages around these hotels. You know, when we we want our hotels to boom, a, a, a city like Aroa has a very big opportunity, considering the neighborhood we have. And uh, when we have a very good reputation about security in this area, definitely that's a business. So we have seen cases where there are stages around these hotels. You know, the Borobora stages are very important, we all know that, offer service. But it depends on how they are regulated. When they are well regulated, security threats are not around them and it becomes a very good place for us. So my humble urge is now, let's pick interest in these stages, let's involve them, let's engage with them. So that will also give them a guideline on how they are going to operate within these areas. It will not give a good image where people are being robbed around a certain hotel, I don't think that will be a good one. And then to the client, my urge is that let's sensitize them on the people they are going to be using to move them around. Recently, you are offered a very good opportunity because of the system threats around this area, which are more related with how our young ones operate on numberless motorbikes. So there was that window which was given to the community to have their motorbikes registered. I believe all our motorbikes are registered now because we realized it was a serious security threat and people who were using them, you know, the planners are behind this security threats who are mostly using the numbers in the motorbikes. So if we are going to have stages still around our hotels and with the motorbikes unregistered, I think we shouldn't wait for URI to come for enforcement. We can engage them at friendly levels. Just advise them to have them registered. And also to also to, 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 to sensitize our clients. Protect them. Because these are the people who are giving us the money. To engage them that the people they are going to board, mm. especially the ones who are moving at night, let them be a little bit cautious of their security. They should avoid boarding these numbers. I think that's all what I can say for now. And I think the other issues are be able to respond to them. Thank you. SP Jokende, Julius, Ossie Station, CBS Arrow. Um, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate the share for inviting us for this meeting. In most cases, we get challenges which are originate from uh, these places. But uh, as, as you know, it affects people who are actually sometimes foreigners who uh, I, I had at the majority. They are the reason behind the booming of, uh, of, uh, of businesses in Arua. Now, how do we come in? As police, we have a big role to, to, to perform. But uh, in most cases, we are left behind. Now that today we have started this thing together, I pray we move together. Me personally, I have no problem, I have no challenge. At any one moment of time, I can move. If the matter is for security. Now, I have a few points to put across. For us, the hotel um, management or the owners. If we are to walk out of this place right now and we go to, to some of these places, maybe we just sample them. 
will be in position to see these challenges right away on spot. Um, Arua is blessed with very many good places, good hotels. But that's how we take things for granted. I'm telling you, sometimes you, you walk in hotel and you, you see issues and you're, you're like, these guys are jokers. I'm not talking for bad, you may forgive me, but I'm talking out of experience. Where I sit, I, I am one of the people who, who, who are the first consumers of reports, crime reports, the first consumers is there, crime intelligence officer. But uh, my office is next to what they call exception point at police, which is now CPS. And for anything that moves from there, it has to pass through me. That's why I, I consume a lot of these reports, theft, blood, robberies. So let us try to strengthen our security in the most simplest way. Some of these hotels, last time I got an engagement with one of the managers and I was telling him, but really my brother, why? <laughs> Look at your good hotel. When you're entering, just a small camera of 450. You can't put there there. Then somebody gives you a reason boldly that, you know what? Our customers, they fear camera. And you're dealing with wrong people. <laughs> Somebody who fears camera is the wrong person. That's the criminal. You know our customers here, they don't want cameras. What is that? That's not good reason. At least to to scare away some of those calibers, you better put it so that you run your smart business. Whoever comes and sees camera and run away, he will have saved you from very many things. Um, you know this is business. Sometimes it is not good to talk about people's businesses. You talk in general. There was a time they stole, they stole some uh, some somebody's money, laptop. came in, we arrested, we started the procedure of investigation and probably prosecution. The management of the hotel came in and said, ah no, let us harmonize this thing here, because this is how it hampers our business, our names, and something like that. We have something to protect. Of course, if a complainant says, okay, me, what I want is you, I want to recover my lost uh, properties. You have nothing to do. You can't force my And uh, they did that. It did not last for one month in the same place again. This time they stole laptops. What? Three laptops of a professor, something like that. The man was going to lecture in Muni. He was now very stranded. He, I said, my brother, where do we begin from? Ask police. We are going to begin from your management. Whom, whom did you receive here? Because there is no camera to, at least to take us back. That at this point, when this man entered, he left. He left with a copy of his key. And again, who entered and again locked this place very well. You know? It is a common thing. They steal from your room. You come back, you open when it is even locked very well. Now you begin asking yourself, what has happened? Manager, do you have a copy of? I don't have. Now what happened? You may not have any reason, but to arrest the management or begin from there. So members, there are things, some of these things we can avoid. Simple thing, that camera there will scare a wrong person. Just by look, looking at it like this, 
You can say, and no, maybe I will come tomorrow. He has run away. The bigger problem that you are supposed to carry tomorrow, even if he had paid you two hundred dollars, it is you, you have you have now washed it away. Somebody can give you that two hundred dollars for a night, but you will end up paying one thousand or two thousand dollars because you don't know the reason as to why he has invested his his two hundred dollars. That is an investment. He's paying knowing that I am going to get more than what I have given. Then for you, you will now carry all that one, the burden he has, he has caused. Secondly is a registration. I don't know why it is so difficult. But anyway, they talked about it, chairman talked about it. And those days, uh, you find there are two books. One is the one they will present to the to, 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 to the team of, uh, of tax. Then the other one is it is the management who knows. But my dear brother and sister, when it comes to security, if one day we walk there, in the, like my colleague said, and we find <coughs> such things are still happening, you register three people in the book. Then actually all your all your rooms are full. And you will explain after. You will pass arrest whoever is there. Then uh, follow later. He has read for you the the, the, the what uh, the article. Maybe he can read again. So that uh, because I will now implement on his behalf. It is your duty to inform the security about something which is going wrong. We may not be knowing. It is the reasons why you are there as the manager at that particular time. Let us be registering these people correctly. Actually, for central division, even it is even the best. Even if you don't register, even if you register, you will have to pay the the other percentage. It remains constant. You 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 hiding the other book doesn't affect the what? Doesn't affect the, the the revenue. Still, you have to pay the percentage. Not like in other places where uh, every one person you have to remit uh, about one thousand. One thousand. You gonna share it? Yes. But this one is constant. They even made it so easy. So members, let us check ourselves. Identification. Now these identity cards are always encouraged you people to have uh, uh, detectors. These detectors, the one you use for, for money. Yeah? Use it also on your identity card. On those if it's a national identity card, original one, you will see it. Some people give give you fake document and for you, you go by that. When he has changed something very small, you know that. This name Joker and there. If somebody removes one K, it will still pronounce the same. But actually this is now a different person. It will still remain Joker and there, but different person now. This is different. So if somebody presented for you identity of Joker and there with a single K, that, that is not me. <laughs> So there are some, some small, small things in security that we forget. We forget small and something big hits you. By the time you are trying to defend yourself, it is too late. And this, we are dealing with business. Where if your name goes off small like this, it will take time for you to recover. That's right to be keen. Those things, they even don't cost much. About 50,000, you get a very good uh, detector. It helps you to detect fake money, fake documents like uh, like uh, national identity card, passport, and other things. All <coughs> for you may look at passport and say hey, this is genuine, but that is just your eye. You put it in, a, in the machine, it will show you totally different thing. Piece of paper just so for security reason. Let us be large.
alert and alert indeed because given uh, the location of our city, which, uh, he called it Dubai, brings people from South Sudan, people from Congo. Actually, weekends, if you are to sit on, on uh, around Vora Custom on Friday, even on Saturday, you will see how Congolese are coming in. You don't know their intention. Sometimes it's not all about what you think, that this is business as usual. No. Some of them come with wrong intention, ill intention. We have ADF as infiltrated this Eastern Congo. And we all know about this. We'll come and sleep in your hotel, and when they are tracing, you end up also writing some statement, something which we do not want. You be careful, kid, and uh, you have the right to say no. Even if somebody is giving you times two of what you collect every day, they say, ah, no, 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 no. My dear friend, according to what I've seen, you are not supposed to be here. Call the police and we act. With these few remarks, I think uh, the chair allow me to submit. If you anything, a prime intelligence is there, can I give you more. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you. This year is of security and uh, the responsible officers are there. We only co coordinate. The performance of the hotel owners, uh, we, are, we are looking forward to interacting with you on issues of uh, hotel tax. But so far, you have, you have performed better than the last like, the other year. <laughs> So next time when you are going to come from these big numbers, even we shall award, we shall, we shall still uh, uh, award those who uh, least performed, so that it will, it will motivate you more. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. But uh, the, issue of, the issue of security, it is every other person's concern. That's what we, we need to look at. Look at your hotel as your own home. Because if you are going to uh, uh, relax a bit, should it turn to be in security, it will affect the entire town. That's why I was like chair and uh, other members. That let's even not only focus on central division, let's fo focus on the entire Arua city. Uh, uh, are these best practices being also embraced in Aivu? For example, in Aivu, there were a number of uh, meetings held uh, with hotel owners, managers, but uh, of course, um, uh, uh, I think lack of uh, guidance, they were like, they, they wanted to maintain the status quo, that they still want to just uh, follow the, the, the registers, and then they will, they, they will meet it on a daily basis. Uh, your counterpart will be able to tell you whether they are complying, uh, uh, putting aside the issue of uh, 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 hotel tax, are they really complying? Are they are they furnishing police uh, 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 and also immigration? You know, with the with, with the with the details of guests on daily basis. If they are not doing it, then all of us are sitting on time bomb. Because if something will happen naive, it still still affect the entire city. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Uh, that's what I, I, would, I, would, I would say that uh, let's uh, look at the holistic uh, 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 aspects of security uh, in the entire city for the better. I wish you the best. Thank you. We shall keep in touch. As a tell owners, you wait for that invitation. Okay. Yeah, I wish you. Uh, the meeting was, I think, it was a celebration of one man hour and five minutes. I don't need to waste a lot of time. I know. I know. What is this? I have stopped a lot. We're going to bore about twenty minutes. There are issues which I wanted to put, and I think they were put forward. One issue is the registration, which is a must. 
that the education of life. Then he, they have not talked about the, the other steps in the hotels and lodges, still in TV, work, they are all there. There are a lot of Katogo which, which are happening in the hotels and lodges. So as uh, it was aired here, you are supposed to remit your dying records to our office and go. But we have given by the fine for those that are there in our office since so long, long ago. But it's only that we don't have much power, we don't have many officers. We are supposed to be deployed in some of these hotels. They are supposed to be there and understand it's only the hotel owner to know that is a police officer that other people don't know. You get it? But it's only that we don't have. Uh, so I, I, I request that we have to abide by what has been said by URA and even my DPC. Those things are key. You need to have those registration, uh, what the person is coming, where, why. So concerning that, I want to only put some five recommendations about security tips. Because most of them were already there. So I want to put security tips to their fellow partners. One is, you need to conduct security assessment to your premises. Evaluate the current security protocols and identify any <coughs> vulnerable or areas of improvement that you have there. That is very important. Two, assess the fiscal security of the property, including entrance and exit. Entrance, exit, parking yards. You ensure those things properly. Review effectiveness of surveillance system and alarm system at your hotel if you have. I don't know whether some of the hotels they have those. That's point number one. The other things are subsection. Then point number two is implement or implement enhanced security measures. One is install security cameras, what the DPC talked about. In a strategic locations to monitor public areas, entrance, and the park in your hotel. So you need to ensure that. Two, enhance access control systems by implementing the key card or biometric system of the guest. At least take point, take note of those areas. In the case of presence of the security personnel, especially during high risk, or event. Then they coordinate in the case of that conduct regular security training. If there is any if your hotel has a security personnel, see, conduct regular training or regular security training for the staff to ensure they are aware of the potential threats and they know how to respond appropriately. Then improve communication with your guests. You need to have a proper communication channel with your guests. How do you do it? Clearly communicate the security measures. Communicate the security measures in place to assure or reassure your guests of their safety. You must tell them, provide information on how to report any suspicious activities or concerns to hotel staff. Offer safety tips and guidelines to the guests. You have to tell them, such as keeping the vulnerable or vulnerable, those items they have come with. You tell them how to keep them. Those are security tips in order to secure and, and be courteous when exploring any familiar areas, you tell them. Four, collaborate with the local authorities, these are MCs. Establish a strong relationship with the local law enforcement agencies to receive timely updates on security issues. Coordinate within them and conduct erotic security drills and ensure a safety response to them. These are recommendations. Stay informed and adapt. Stay informed and adapt. 
stay updated on the threat on the latest security protocols. If they can ask, there will be very few who know the security threats within. So at least you must know the security protocols within what the area where your business is existing. Encourage feedback from your guests and the staff regarding security concerns and suggestions. I saw I saw this one in some most of the hotels. They put suggestion boxes there. People drop. That's very encouraging. So you need to encourage that. Then you have regular regular reviews and updates at your hotel. So those are the few recommendations I wanted to tell them. And the, the key issue is they should bring the records to the office for proper management. Thank you. Thank you. I want to give you a scenario of last week. At the concourse, the Ascari, those skillful guys, one of them was stealing things at the premises. Every day these people are complaining three times. But I have a camera at my shop. You know my shop is located at that premises. So I heard uh, about that. I went. I told them this thing can be first. We we found that the Ascari, who is guarding the place, stealing a manhole. It is here. The video is here. You see that Ascari? That is the Ascari, which is supposed to guard the what? Provide the security. Provide the security. Became now the thief himself. He's now in prison. I just went and retrieved this. Thing. We found him at 3 a.m. at night. The camera was able to capture him. So the importance of the camera, no one is going to challenge it. If you have a camera at your place, actually 80% of your issues are solved. By the way, some of the chefs and the, the, what, the cooks, do you know they still even the food? I'm telling you, I have done hotel work for nine years. I did the hotel business in Yumbe and in Koboko with the lodging facilities. Women can even steal a raw meat, rice, and you go with it. I'm telling you. So you, you install even cameras facing towards the kitchen. They will not steal. It is for your own good. Even there are some, these ones who dress the beds. Someone packs a, a bed sheet and put it in, in, in a handbag, disappears with it. So it is very important to put CCTV cameras at those places. Right now, I am able to watch at my business place using my phone. Right now here, even the lady who is selling there, I will be able to see her. Say, but what is this you are doing? Even I'm in Kampala, I do that. But some of these small things, you people doing big business in your hotels, you can't even install cameras in your places, sincerely. So you are sparking problems to your businesses by yourself. Kindly, let's speak these advice. Very serious, it will help you. I think we are opening uh, for a discussion, reactions. Within 10, 15 minutes, it is done. Our security teacher got interested when you say uh, sometimes women steal meat and, and chicken. You know, I am a woman and I love issues. With women. So you felt bad. I somehow because of that gender I felt bad. But nevertheless, so for those of you who came late, uh, my name is Bako Judith. I am the assistant at CC for Central Division. Um chair, sometimes staffs at hotel places still things because of payment issues. I hope that everyone here is complying to the labor because of your staffs that you have employed there. And also, when we employ staff, we should take note of their, they need their well-being mentally, give them the offs so that they can be able to rejuvenate that energy and come and serve you well. I would like to know the real chair, who are the real hotel owners of the hotels that are presented here right now? Chairman, hotel owners, count them. Who are the real owners? Yes, maybe Afro Triangle Hotel is mine. My hands are up. I would love to see 
who are the real hotel owners here? There are around four only. Out of how many chairs? There are four. They have five. Five. And then who are at managerial position? Who are the managers? managers. And your ID shows that you are a manager because you my mean. security people are here. My immigration guys are here. If you lie to me, I'll pick you and put you in. <laughs> I am not joking. You may laugh and say, this is just a woman talking. I represent my boss. We represent RCC. We, all of us, represent the president. You can imagine we are communicating to people who do not own these hotels. We are communicating to people who are not managers. People have come here without books. My officer, crime, crime intelligence, was giving recommendations. My head cannot absorb everything. I imagine some of you who came reluctantly. How are you going to disseminate information when you're not taking notes? This is where issues of insecurity come in. Because people are unserious. We will need to write with my boss back to the owners of these hotels and probably check the kind of employees that they have. For us, we have come to fish out insecurity in this city and we are not going to joke. Don't think me and my colleague, because we are women and probably not of age, that we are going to mess up with issues of security of the Wanaingi. Next time when you come for a security meeting like this, pick a book, pick a pen, come with it. I always love the chairman of, of I didn't know he was the, he's the chairman of hotel owners here. He's always with a book and a pen. Sometimes even in workshops I've borrowed him, from him a pen. So when you come to our security meetings henceforth, don't come as if you're going to your market. For me, I am not someone who sells ice cream, who, who talks to dilly people especially when it comes to issues of security. And that is how serious I am. Because when people die in these hotels, the first blame His Excellency will put pressure on us and say, you people are sleeping and I lose my job. Who will pay my children? Who will buy food for my parents? So let us take issues of security as very important as we take our wives and husbands. I don't think women here would love to share their men. They, they provide security 24-7. Even you men who are here, you don't like to share your women with other men. You take it very seriously. So that is how serious we must take our jobs. Two, security threats, my security personnel, my DPC and, and the crime intelligence officers have talked about it. This country signed the law of anti-homosexuality. And his president has, his excellence has appended these signatures. And it has come to our security notice that some of your hotels have people who are pouring money anyhow to the young people in the interest of recruiting them into issues of homosexuality. Chair, the ball is back into your courts. After a year, I expect you to go back and sit with these owners. We fish this very immoral thing which our country, because our, the, 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 the motto of our country is for God and my country, and for us we have the respect to God. So in totality, sit with your people, the owners of these hotels, and warn them, and tell them our security, we are not going to allow someone to joke with our children. How can a man sleep with a fellow man? It is happening in your hotels. And if, say, a room is at 50,000, for them they have the money. They pay it 150. They don't care because they have the money. So it is you who are our first change agents to trap these people. Make a trap of your customers. It is better you have diligent customers who do not threat people's lives, who do not come here to do homosexuality, and then at the end of the day your hotel is operational, than you operating and welcoming visitors who are coming here to sleep with a, a boy sleeping with a fellow boy who are our children and then we close down the hotel. Because there are so many people who are surviving on you as a source of livelihood. Issues of LGBTQ where men are sleeping with men and women are sleeping with fellow women 
That one our eyes are on it in your because of your hotels. They are happening. Not all of you though. Three issues of money laundering and ADF attacks are real and because we are prone to the borders, please be vigilant. Treat your staffs well, I have talked about it. Uh, um, my interest, my other interest is on your compliance uh, arising from the communication of uh, your chairperson hotel owners. It has also come to our notice that you people are very good people, though not all of you. You are complying well in issues of paying to the to Uganda Revenue Authority, and I implore that you continue with this spirit. For those who have not picked up well, please liaise with you. You can come to town clerk. You can come to Ajiga. Ajiga is the man who understands. You explain yourself and say probably I've not picked up. I do not have the customer base, but next time I I hope to comply. That way we will understand you and then them recommending you to be close. We are here to serve you if you have problems, if you cite people who are most likely to cause insecurity in our city or in Dubai here, please let us know. We'll always give you the, uh, the support in terms of your security and people who come to your hotels. Thank you. My name is Colin Siki once again. I'm from Zara Hotel. Uh, my issue is about security check-ins. Uh, it happens once in my hotel, it was just last week but one, uh, where there was a guest who came and booked in, uh, he was in our room, but I didn't know what was happening. After recording all what he asked, uh, he saw all the documents. Now later, when I left the premise, I went home, it was around 3.02, where the security officers came with the mob, who also followed them, and that's what my camera saw to me. Now later, when they reached there, they interacted with the person who was there in the reception. And then after, as a professional police, they even allowed these uh, people who are following them the more to enter in the hotel, in my premises. Now immediately from there, the, 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 the guests, they checked them, they found nothing. And then immediately after that, the guests were worried that they have never experienced this. So it caused a lot of issues in my hotel, even some of the guests, they left. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, when I came, we came up to the resource office. Uh, he tried to see it. He said there was nothing which he had about it. I called my friend. Uh, he told me there was a security threat which was somewhere, but they have sought it. So my concern is, if there are check-ins which are done at night, why don't they do it professionally in a way that it will not also affect my own business, where I'm feeding from? So if it's not like that, you come with more people shouting, they're making noise, does it also make sense? So that's what I want to present. That is one. Two, uh, issues to do with migrations. Uh, I'm always blessed that we were placed in borders. However much we were placed in borders, uh, our neighboring countries, they are not all that at peace. Most of the people who are here, the Congolese and the, uh, the Sudanese, most of them, they are like refugees. And to my notice, the ones who came to me, that's what I always see from the books, they are not having proper documentations. So how are we going to handle this kind of challenge? Because they present themselves as refugees. You will never know they came through this, but when they come here, they'll say they are refugees. They don't want to show those other proper documents. So thank you so much, Chair. That's what I wanted to present. I'm sir, from Santa Maria Hotel. Uh, I think uh, I'm very happy for today's meeting where we are going to have and discuss particular issues concerning with the security issues for both for the city and for our individuals, these businesses we are running. I, first of all, I wanted to react to, to some communication which has been made by where the hotel owners are not here and why they are not here. You know, most of the hotel owners, most here in a world, most times they don't based here. They may have the hotels here, but most of them, they are doing their business with all their works are outside. Which means once when somebody is represented in, in representing that hotel, which means the full authority has been entrusted in that person, where the person will be delivered to the right person. 
So I believe all people who had been here to represent different hotels here have the maximum capacity and the owners have trust in them, in whatever they have delivered. So that one, I'm putting it clear to clear out that doubt. Whoever is sitting here, or they are incapable, no. Let us avoid that. Because we call ourselves in a partnership. When we are in a partnership, we need both representatives. So now, for instance, you are sitting here. Is the president there? No. <laughs> so those are simple things I, we need to understand. Okay? Whoever sits here sits at his or her level of capacity of management. And in most cases, when they are sending people here, they don't send juniors. I believe most of these people who are here have uh, worked senior. more than five years in experience, yes. if they are true. So let us try to cooperate and work together. Two, my second is come to the issue of security. It is true. Without security, even we are losing the business. Once there is a security, you will find that what happens is we receive more tourists, we receive more guests, the business will be booming. And how do we encounter to work together with the security operatives who are more professional than our site? I'm saying this one with a point of where sometimes you say that the guests came, they, they can come to our rooms or to hotel. They may say we can have all the, these other details. But since we also protect the interests of our business, and we also protect the issue of the security. There are two things which usually sometimes happen. If it happens maybe in midnight, something happened wrong and I have a fight in my hotel. I may try to call, call the what the police, who are good enough we have the mobile, who are professors throughout the, the night to try to move. But sometimes the challenge we get with these people is. I'm not saying the officer here is doing it, but people who are on the ground, because your eyes cannot be in all corners of this. See, when once you may call, when they reach, I hope the first procedure they should have taken is supposed to come through the, the manager or the management who is there, even though it is security issue. Three, the issue of calling you are calling the police, the police may raise there. You call them to come and help you. And they will, they will also ask you to help. <laughs> Is there anything? We have now done the work. Can you take my number? <laughs> so I'm doing a business. Then you are, you are coming up with the kind of, this kind of scenario. How do you expect, even once I call you already, even sometimes when you see wrong people, I say, after all, even if I call these people, they will come and ask something from me. Let me keep quiet. So let us challenge ourselves on both sides. The implementers, the owners of the hotel, and the security team, they are doing a good job. We have seen the, the rate of the crime has been reduced. But most people have now confidence in our hotels. So when we cry to you, when we call you, try to do the work while you were employed there, I believe you are paid. I believe the motorcycle you are riding is fuel. <laughs> so these are some of the challenges. Sometimes when you find uh, some of the members they are not interested in, in putting those things. Maybe they feel this is like this, I'm going to call here, these things are going to come. So otherwise, the issue of security, it is one of the best interests for us. The issue of migration, it is too true that these people are coming through the borderline. We breathe, the migration people are there doing their job. Because once you capture somebody from the borderline, how possible this person can manage to enter inside 
And what are the criteria as a local here? What have you done to, to check on this? I remember I was in one of the hotels, not in Uganda, but outside. I used to see immigration people. They take the move to hotel to hotel to check how are the things. But I've never seen one come to our hotel. So I think those are some of the few things I feel I should be put it forward here. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that incident I uh, came on that by the beach. That incident happened where there was a uh, beg not to be captured in Canada. Yes. So excuse me. <laughs> so yeah, very sensitive. Yeah. 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 This was answered uh, now the camera. <laughs> no, you're in a queue. Ah, West Nile TV. For West Nile TV. No, this is a business. It's not extremely transparent. Okay. You see, when you are. As I've told you, we have the office of the Prime Minister. That is the primary office that handles issues of refugees. So anyone is claiming they're refugee, if for example they have come in late, you can decide to, to also take down, just ask them for their name, you, but then tomorrow make sure that by the time you are accommodating them tomorrow, they should, have, they should present to you something that shows that maybe they have started the what? The process of registration, the identifying as a refugee. The office is here, it's not far. We all know where it is. Kind in this meeting, because it is a matter of security and uh, for the security committee anytime they can be at your door allow them to do their work don't hesitate when they are on their official duty two my manager Santa Maria you almost scare people a lot but for us who are in the security, we don't get scared, but we do our, our work. What we do not encourage is that uh, if the community have given some information, you know, they are also always very vigilant. If there is a thug who managed to enter a, in a hotel and sleeps there, you don't encourage them to, to go together with the security and enter into people's hotel rooms. It is very bad. It can also scare their guests. And you realize the, 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 the guests next time may, may not come and spend the night there. So if such information is there, let's manage it very well. Like if you are there with the crime intelligence, you will go and do that work. Minus even those <coughs> those uh, community members. They will remain outside, you enter and check. At an appropriate time, they will get the information. So issues of going as a convoy and you enter into someone's hotel, by the way, it is very illegal. It is not allowed, but the security can go even 100 people of them. If they are all security personnel, they will enter into, into, into your room and check what they want. Because if you have a suspicious person in your room, what do you expect? So we invited you here so that we had that cordial relationship. Because you give uh, 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 taxes to the government, even the local taxes to our city council, we don't want you to have a problem. We encourage you to build a a working relations to the council with the security team. Uh, uh, as he was saying, the, some policemen, after the work, they, they ask fuel. You know, some of these things you would, you would discuss it at a, at a certain level with the, with the police. When you, we come for such a meeting, then the police will have a lot of fear. But we encourage you to help him. Don't don't hesitate to fear to to, 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 to to help him at his premises. You know, some people are very funny. We say, ah, the other time this man says 
we got fuel from him, some policemen can decide to, you know, fear your premises. But if you have done also wrong, they have right to, 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 to say. But uh, the person of DPC Caliber, I know him. He's someone with a clean record. He's actually one of uh, the police officers we have ever seen with a clean record. Thank you so much for doing good work. And uh, uh, next time when you go with the, those police, I know those are these junior young policemen. You are there to give intelligence, tell them kindly. We should not, uh, you know, this kind of asking either if you will or entering to someone's house when people are very many should be discouraged. It is not allowed. One, it kills the bad image of the what? It gives the bad image of the police and the security. Two, it can also spoil the working relations between the hotel owners and, that, and the security. Then finally, it is the kind of uh, corruption. You know how Muse of late has become so wild about the issues of corruption. We don't encourage it. Recently, was saying, I am going to even arrest the cows and other disease. I saw it on a media, it went viral. So we don't encourage the security people who are very corrupt. You go there to do your work, you end up sitting in the manager's office. What are you going to do there? Eh? Hmm? You reach there, if the responsible person is there, you get the record, you check, you, you round the rooms, you are going. These issues, even you, you, you stop in the office, you don't want to go and check the rooms, meaning that there is also a problem. A police officer, any security personnel, immigration department, who has come to do work, to check, the rooms must do it. Don't you remain at the, at the reception, don't you remain at the manager's office, you pretend that you have already done the work. You have not done any good work. Maybe you have a different meeting with the managers of the hotel. Kindly do that. And two, the cameras will also help us to see how, what our city people are doing. Yes, if you have a good cameras at the entrance, at the premises of the hotel, the camera will be able to tell us what kind of the work our security guys are doing there. Because if they move and direct in the manager's office and he comes back, meaning that he has not done any work, maybe he has paid some appreciation without even doing the work, that is corruption. Let's avoid that. So as, uh, as part of our, our resolution, Let's agree that we shall do, do this meeting between maybe quarterly. After every four months or three months, let's have some meeting. We need to sit like that, we talk, so that we, we really clean this criminality in the town. Two, we expect you to submit your reports, as the, the migration has said, to the migration and even the crime intelligence. It will help you a lot to minimize issues of uh, you know, suspicion in your hotel rooms and so on. If you're able to give information timely, no one is going to disturb you, by the way. So, private intelligence and immigration, do your work. Try to have all the contacts of the managers and the hotel owners. Y yes, you will read your numbers and you share with them. And uh, the third thing is, uh, we uh, saw when such a operation you are going to do. You also tip us. Okay. So it is prudent enough for, for you to share that information with us who are in charge of the security. When you sneak alone and they put your legation on you, you are, you are not going to defend yourself. Because we are not aware, you feel you can do it alone, then it becomes an issue. This time, let's work in coordination, cooperation and so on. So that if something happens, people are able to own the responsibility. But if you sneak alone, and you have any issue with the hotel owner, he reports you, you will bear the cross. You take it by yourself. 
Another issue is they are deluded that the issue of uh, checking the IDs, seeing the name on the ID, the face of the person who presents you the ID is very important. I can give you an ID say that I'm called the half, but the face on the ID is different from the real face. Do you know that? Someone can just pick an ID say that I'm called the Swadik. It gives you the ID, you just copy what was on the ID, but the face of that person is a different one. The person ends up causing crime and you will not arrest him because the faces are not the same. So I have realized they gave you very good information which will help you do your work. I don't want to bore you much. At the secretary, our minutes must be properly prepared. In the subsequent meeting, we need those minutes. And even these minutes, as a security team, we need them. We shall also give it to the city security committee in our next security committee meeting, which is since the third week, third week of every month. So ours is actually second week of every month. So before that, you submit to us. I think if uh, 